Okay, I want to tell you guys about Shanti, my beautiful Korean queen, who came to me almost 12 years ago now, uh, in 2010, when I first got to South Korea. Precious companion, oft aggravating nuisance, beloved friend, sometimes neurotic soulmate, Shanti too is an enigma, a furry feline friend with whom I share a long and rich history. The matriarch of our family, our shared story begins in South Korea, where I rescued her from the harsh life of a street cat, and she rescued me from my lonely nights in the small rural farming town of Jinggyo. In the two years we lived there together, Shanti and I developed a bond stronger than with any other creature I've encountered, save her auntie Sophie, my cat of almost 14 years, who joined me in Korea not long after I got there. Shanti was fortunate to get to know Sophie before she passed. Now Sophie's story is rich and full of wonder, but that's for another time. Shanti is, using a common euphemism, complicated. She has issues, some might say. He's hurt. Come on, baby. Come on, Shanti. Shanti, please let me help you. Please let me help you. Please let me help you, baby. Now, why she is so neurotic is also another story, but suffice it to say that Shanti is not the sweetest, well-adjusted cat around. She's just a whiner. Shanti. Not to say that she doesn't have her soft and sweet moments, but often it seems that grumpiness prevails. Grumpy girl, oh, you baby girl. Oh, you grumpy girl, you. You grumpy girl, you. But you know what? Her complicated, neurotic issues are one of the reasons I love her so deeply. For they remind me of my own neurosis, my own idiosyncrasies, and the need to not only accept them, but to love them unconditionally. And I love Shanti unconditionally. However, this proves to be quite a challenge at times, as I scurry to and fro accomplishing the many tasks of my full and productive life. Here's the community garden. We have a little corner of the village here, and I've gotten a number of people involved. I ideally want to get the kids involved and use it as an opportunity to teach them English. Her pacing back and forth, accompanied by her screams and howls. It's all right, baby, all right. Little bit, little bit, then more later, okay? I know, I know, baby, okay. All right, see you later, baby. Her passive-aggressive shenanigans often trigger feelings of irritation and annoyance. So, I don't particularly want to hear those agonizing sounds in the sanctity of my own home. But after all, what choice do I have? I must accept her neurosis. She's in my life to stay, until death do us part. Death will part us physically, yes, but I strongly suspect, deeply yet inextricably, that our bond will continue even after one or both of us passes from this physical realm. The key word here is choice. I get to choose. Choose whether to focus on her unique, wonderful qualities or on the oft irritating idiosyncrasies. I get to choose how far and how deeply I want to extend my compassion to not only tolerate but to cherish her neuroses. For again, they put me in touch with my own and the opportunity I have to accept and love them, to love myself unconditionally. I often speak of animals as teachers, nature, creation as our teachers. Shanti is the quintessential teacher of compassion, one of my highest aspirations to be truly compassionate at every level of my being. Okay, tonight, She's the last one. I learned my lesson. She drives home the realization, which I know well intellectually, but less so experientially, that to be consistently compassionate with other beings, I must start with myself. I must learn self-compassion, particularly in those moments when I most want to judge and condemn myself. Thank you, my precious friend, for your companionship, your love, and the many life lessons you are helping me to learn.